Hello, friends. Welcome to Brainworms, the podcast that wears its Joker paint under its Guy Fox mask. I'm Joe. I'll be joined by David, Kane, and Chris very shortly. We're reading the Guy in Enchantment. It's about a guy at the end of the world, presumably going off to save his family from the Neo Mafia and their Neo Dollars and Neo Cars. It's a weird time. But before any of that happens, I'm going to remind all of you to go to WeGiveYouBrainworms.com where you can jump into our Patreon, support the show monetarily. If you enjoy our content, consider supporting our content. You can also jump into our Discord. I'm told that it is funky and also fresh. No reason to waste any more time. Let's jump right in to Kane reading. The Guy in Enchantment by Tom King. Thomas, your ex-wife is a whiny bitch. Wow, we almost made it three paragraphs without shit talking. Why do you want her out here? (laughs) I don't. I just want my kids. Their framed school pictures drew my eye to the low shelf behind my Mac. I shook it off, turning back to caring but tough Mary. Doreen is part of the package, regrettably. Can you hack it? Why now? What's the matter out there? Briefly, I explained how the East Coast was falling into a sea of chaos and why transport was closed down. Can you take vacation? Mary nodded, still thoughtful as she considered the situation. So there's no other way than us going out to her? I I do kind of like the idea that you have to take vacation to go rescue someone from the apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. Man, well, it's because it's, it's not the apocalypse on the West Coast. They should go to Cincinnati. It'll take at least 10 years for it to get there. If this was Bruce Campbell instead of this guy, man, this would be so much more awesome. It's true. Yeah. Mary nodded, still thoughtful as she considered the situation. So there's no other way than us going out to get her. None that I trust will leave my kids alive and in one piece. Mary winced as if she regretted her deliberate, lawyerly consideration of all the options. Do you think she's lying? Blowing things out of proportion? She's done it before, you know. The problem was she had a point. Doreen was a whiny bitch. Tom. She used every one of her own hands. But my kids are special. They're the best thing I've ever done in my life. The offset to what I'd done in Nam, The golden dream that eased Doesn't my flashback like nightmares. <laughs> Guilt stole over me with the stealth of a slow acting poison, invading me, seeping out of every pore, reminding me that somehow, some way, it was my fault they were in danger. Being a parent can be hell sometimes. Now, I'm not a parent, Uh but I feel like that is toxic parenting. Yeah. Assuming that your children are going to be the thing that redeems you for the bad things you've done in your life. Yeah. Yeah, That's like a great way to create complexes in your kids. Yeah. Really just putting that onto another person, like someone you're you're in a relationship with, just like you're the thing that's going to fix me. Yeah, that the same toxicity of the manic pixie dream girl. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's it's bad. It's a bad look. I don't know. I think that It depends on the way you're looking at it. If you're looking at your kid like, wow, this kid is going to do the good things that I never did. Or I'm going to make sure my kid doesn't make the same mistakes that I did. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that that's the best thing I've ever done in my life. The offset to what I'd done in Nam. Okay. The golden dream that eased my flashback nightmares. So what I'm coming from it as, uh, you know, is that he sees a chance for his kids to do the good things that he didn't do. Right. Like to be the good people that he wasn't. So I don't necessarily think that he's putting that on them. It's not an expectation. It's a hope. Exactly. That's what it feels like to me. Fair enough. You know, like, Fair enough. Like okay. I, I certainly think that my child, which the creation of that should really upset you guys. Just so you know. <laughs> oh, it does. It yeah. It does. <laughs> yeah. Kane, just because you cut a piece of yourself off and it still wriggles does not mean that it's your child. I mean, that's how I did it. <laughs> but no, I don't think it's that big of a, that's of a thing. I think I just expect the worst from T. <laughs> from Jackson Tom. King. <laughs> she might be a little, but I believe the public news stuff. It's crazy in the cities and her sister does work for the DIA. I paused, trying to adopt Mary's careful, thoughtful manner. I think my kids will be dead soon if I don't get to them. Mary sighed, rubbed her eyes, then peered owlishly at me and dodged the issue one more time. 
Did I tell you that my ward talisman works? Drove off a property tax appraiser yesterday. Her grin turned wolfish as she needled me about the efficacy of earth magic. Wonder why? You know, David, Maybe I that mind old if Warm Springs tribe shaman who mentored me was onto something when he spoke of a gathering of the spirits. <laughs> when I didn't react, she sighed with frustration. Thomas, you've never questioned me about why I follow earth magic rites. Why not? Your business, I said, feeling the press of time and the threat to my kids. Anyway, it's all coincidence or natural phenomena, just like the UFO. Phenomena. Do, 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 do. <laughs> if it can't be replicated in a laboratory, it isn't real. Mary turned grumpy. Thomas, That's there is more than one way to look at life and reality. You this know, was not the time to piss on Mary's wiki, Wicca hobby. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, David? <laughs> This whole thing to me is just a whole bunch of my wife came in. She's great. She's awesome. She is so sweet and loving and caring and listens to me. Not at all like that old shrew that I used to be married to. Right. He was just an awful toxic bitch. But, you know, she's not perfect because she's also way dumb and believes stupid stuff. (laughs) And wants to waste my time asking my opinion about it instead of paying attention to the real things, like what's important to me. I can't prove it. I I only have these few pages as evidence. But I think T. Jackson King might have some issues with the way that he relates to women. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. 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 This was not the time to piss on Mary's Wicca hobby. True. Is Will there you come a time with me? for that? For a moment, she pretended great thought, cupping her chin in her palm as her elbow teetered on the armrest. Just after the cakes and ale, Chris. <laughs> she inspected my ceiling as if searching for invisible tea leaf patterns, but saw only paint and spackle. She sighed melodramatically, finally replying as she noticed my worried earnestness. Thomas, of course I will. Where you go, my love, I go. Uh, Even to crazy cities. Anyway. It's she looked as aside she at my weaponry an wall. Or an opinion We're about getting things. to the weaponry wall. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I am excited about the weaponry wall. All right. She looked aside at my weaponry wall, eyeing my two-handed crusader broadsword <laughs> that hung next to the AK-47 rapid-fire oh, assault no. rifle I would bought two years ago. I'm hankering to see what your sword will really slice through. Or no, I'm hankering to see whether your sword will really slice through a four-inch poplar. You At know, the you, very least, we can want... use it to cut firewood when we camp out. No, you can't. Don't cut tonight. firewood with a sword. That's, That's not, not how that works. <laughs> I can't oh. cook. I've got hey, to pack no, things no, for the trip. No, no, hang on. We're stopping. I'm, stop- <laughs> I'm stopping this. Okay, okay. Do you know why vikings why they are associated with using axes they're tools yes because they use them for chopping wood and oh yeah it's also good for splitting a man's skull to the teeth yeah it's a great tool that just happens to be able to kill a motherfucker if you need to yeah yeah yeah. now a sword is well it it is a tool but it's not a sword is a tool specifically for Mm -hmm. killing people you you can't reverse that yeah the blade isn't designed to serve that purpose you can cut you firewood want with to. a well That's done gonna... but it's gonna fuck up your sword it's not yeah. gonna be good for it in the long term it is the no. wrong tool and it's for not the even job. gonna be great for cutting your i mean you can yeah. do it but it's not gonna be well cut firewood either i don't feel like if you're gonna use a sword for that you're better off going with like a katana that has a thicker blade oh no hard disagree hard disagree like hit, hitting a large trunk with a with a european sword is just gonna bend it yeah, hitting a trunk with a katana is just going to shatter the blade of the katana. They don't hold up well to hard impacts. They're for slashing. Mm. Yeah. And me moving on is not me dodging the fact that I was wrong about something. I'm just... Something else that... <laughs> yeah, I just want to move on. I want to finish this also, chapter so, so we can call this book done. All right? Also, you don't want... Sword making has come so far since the Crusader swords. Like... You it's, could it's, just go with a rapier. I mean, you could, but this is... This... Is this a joke or are you asking? I think he's making fun of the way you pronounced it. What's a rapier? How is it actually pronounced? Uh, I think it's rapier. Yeah, I mean, I've... Uh, rapier, rapier, rapier. I've heard... Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think... I think I've he heard was... rapier, I've heard rapier, and I've heard rapier. I've never heard rapier. It sounds like a like southern Frenchman. 
Southern Frenchman. <laughs> My name is Rapier. <laughs> I call me Jack Rapier. <laughs> but yeah, like if you want a chopping implement, go with an axe. If you yeah. want, or at least a machete. Cutting... Yeah, guys, machete. guys, guys. Just what? Can okay, what? All right, we're focusing on the wrong shit again. All right, <laughs> Chris. Let me just uh, sum this up by saying the sword was chosen because it's an icon. It's chosen for its symbolism because oh, because it's a, a yeah. specific style of like you think of certain things when you see a sword. Right, like that. right. I it would have been better if he just pulled it out of a stone for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I can't cook. I've got to pack things for the trip. Mary pulled her helmet off and laid it in her lap. Her expression a bit woebegone. I guess this means we skip our afternoon sword practice? Well, she looked disappointed. So disappointed that I felt new guilt at the unfairness of her suffering for my parental needs. What? But why were things changing? Why was normalcy slipping away so very, very quickly? It was a question I'd worked hard to ignore these last six months. Mary hadn't. She'd practiced her Wiccan beliefs and complementary earth magic even more seriously, disappearing into the woods on strange errands. Was this the last day of what we had, what had become so special and wonderful to me, to both of us? No, we'll do that practice. I stood up, moving forward to pull a startled Mary into my arms. And I won't cook tonight, not unless you could disarm me in fair practice. You may beat me with saber work, but old hack and slash over there will make diced mincemeat out of your lady Evangeline. What? Mary stood on tiptoes, kissed me full on the lips, and then nearly broke my ribs with a tight bear hug. Bullshit. Come out and prove it. Letting go and turning back toward the open study door, she reached around its frame and pulled inside her own sword. Lady Evangeline is a lightweight, carborundum-edged saber, midways in appearance between a skinny epi and a two-handed broadsword. Her right wrist flexed, making Evangeline flash through its paces just under my nose. And put on your practice suit. I don't like husbands who bleed all over dinner while they're cooking it. I smiled, then followed her out into the hallway. She continued out the front door while I opened the hall closet, looking for my own leather jacket, leather pants, bronze shin greaves, and T-slit Trojan helmet. Of course he's got a Trojan helmet. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) He has so a our standard helmet. bet was the prize this evening. Whoever was disarmed had to cook dinner. Lately, I'd cook three out of five dinners. Partly because Mary hates to cook and I like to. Mostly because she's too fast for my buff male muscles. That's not how muscles and Very work. specifically because of that fucking little corkscrew disarm wrist flick she'd learned from her French epi teacher, epi teacher seven years ago. I grunted, trying to think up an effective counter move. It's been Dressed seven finally, years, brother. Yeah, mm-hmm. fucking give it up. <laughs> Open up. Dressed book. finally in decidedly functional Greco-Roman clothing. <sighs> I followed Mary out the front door. Nearby, up in the clothes-packed oaks that fringed our gravel driveway, cobalt blue stellar jays chook chucked among the oaks and a few ponderosa pines. I'm starting to like the fact that they're LARP nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Black on white juncos fluttered overhead. A gray squirrel, squirrel ran for home and a warm breeze drifted up from the valley bottom. Just uphill in the middle of the grassy field of our volleyball court, Mary moved fluidly through practice jumps and parries. Her straw yellow hair jump. glinting at the golden sun of a late fall afternoon. Mary's fierce concentration allowed no notice of me. I just... I... Maybe my experience was different, but I'm starting to question whether the author here actually is affiliated or aware of what the SCA is. Oh, yeah. Society for Creative Anachronism. Because no one, no one in the SCA would ever tolerate, in my local chapter that I tried to be a part of at any rate at one point, would tolerate someone wearing Roman like Greco-Roman armor and using a European. <laughs> right. <sword>. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, I want to point out that that Roman helmet, their sparring gear has no eye protection. Right. Yeah. It's pretty big oversight. Also, now I, I'm not a hundred percent on this, but I did take a pay for like a few weeks. I don't think a pay translates at all to a saber because an epee is uh, you you get points with stabbing, right? And a saber, while it can stab, it is 
definitely not designed specifically for stabbing. Sure. Also, sabers work best for cavalry, not infantry. Just, just this, this, it's so much, so right. much. Just like, come on. It was midways in appearance between an epee and a two-handed broadsword. That well, what? So a okay, one-handed hey. broadsword. Yeah. No, no, no. Between an epee and like, okay, that's like saying this animal is something between a snail and a T-Rex. Like, thanks for the description. <laughs> All right, well, we're almost finished with chapter one, so I'm going to do it. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> she was so beautiful and so devoted. Why did she still love me? I plagued her with flashback nightmares, my combat time 40 years ago, a Gaius that still weighed me down. And when Doreen moved the kids east to Virginia and I moved to Oregon to be with Mary, I had cried night after night for six months, mourning the loss of my children. (sighs) Wonderful Mary had wept with me, lying in bed together. She had comforted me, had made the loss a little more bearable. Her gift burned bright inside until I became haunted by our likely future. My children slaughtered or enslaved. My wife and I marooned somewhere on the prairies. Our home burned down by religious fanatics. Our life no longer what it was. Except for this afternoon. One last practice as if nothing had changed. When she stopped parrying and looked at me with an inviting pixie grin, I smiled back. We were a lawyer and an archaeologist, a romantic and a rationalist, a believer in earth magic, and a strictly kosher scientist type? What? (laughs) Caught in the time of change. A time of fear and a time of mystery. We would soon set out across a landscape undulating with earthquakes filled with strange polychrome hazes and inhabited by hard-eyed men and soldiers armed with weapons far more powerful than my old AK-47. It was a crazy promise I'd made, but maybe destiny was not the stuff of nightmares. Maybe there was no karma except what we each made for ourselves out of love or sacrifice or out of belief. Whatever this journey brought us, I hoped Mary and I could keep what we loved in each other. Some part of the essentials. Some part of what made life worth living. Somehow. Then I recalled what a friend at Lawrence Livermore Lab had told me. Say that three times fast. He said that at the subatomic level, the distribution of random events was no longer a bell curve, but varied according to the observer who measured it. He called the times Heisenberg's Uncertain Hell. My fear grew stronger. All right. I also want to point out that, you know, funny when he was mourning, you know, his kids and all. I do think it's interesting that the comfort from his partner helped a little. It wasn't like I was being crushed under like, no, 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 no. That would be taking away from how greatly he can deal with things. She helped a little bit. Yeah. Like, God forbid that as a communal species, we need someone else and we're, we're better in groups mm. than by ourselves, you know? Right. Yeah, Tom's an ubermensch. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. He's a, <laughs> he's a big, strong man. I'm sure. I'm sure he's a big man. Yeah. We don't know yet, but I'm sure that Tom is a big man. Well, I do want to, to also to point out that this is a brainworm's first this is the first big woman. She's like six foot tall. That's true. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Maybe he's not a big man. Maybe we just get a big lady. Maybe. I'm down. Yeah. I'm... What, what do we think about, what the fuck, the guy in Enchantment Part 1? I don't hate it. I'd almost like to read something else by him. Mm-hmm. The poetry. We got it. Or we got something. It. Yeah, just, just to see. Maybe not on the show, but just like... Just to, maybe even just a sample of one of his other books. Just, sure. Because, I mean, was this just, I'm really angry at my ex-wife? <coughs> is that all this is going to be? Right. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, because like if, if it weren't full of, again, at least the first chapter, his weird hangups and the political, I started to say undertones, but a lot of that was just bubbling up to the surface. <laughs> He definitely has some personal politics that he's bringing in. If it weren't for all of that, I would be almost interested to see where this is going. I mean, there's just a lot going on in this first chapter. There's a lot laid down. Yeah. Basic premise being now this guy and his wife are going to have to travel across country to go rescue his ex-wife and his kids and bring them back across the country Mm -hmm. in a time where literally everything is crazy. 
Right. Cool. I would read that. Yeah. Oh, like, by the way, did I happen to mention that my ex-wife is a bitch? No, really. I mean, she's a bitch. Like, really, if you were thinking about it, you might think that, oh, God, she's okay. But no, really, she's a <laughs> bitch and everyone knows it. And she's just awful. The worst person. Mm-hmm. And that's just a bit much. Yeah. Just a bit much. I need to uh, disagree with you because the first bits of this gave me hope. I was like... Maybe like maybe it is just a shitty cover because this isn't bad. You know, like this this is some and and there were some things that I I mean by the standard of the shit that we read. Yeah, and also that was competent enough. If he removed the like oh she's a Wiccan like just saying it straight out. If if he removed that and just kept the parts where he was like she looked at the ceiling looking for a pattern in tea leaves like mm-hmm. that would be a nice subtle hint. Yeah, that yeah, that would be yeah. good. Yeah, subtle character building. Yeah, like yeah, they, I don't care. This was terrible. <laughs> so he he made me hope. Sure. He gave me light, and then we just nosedived into his personal problems. I don't know. I've, it's, it's fairly strong prose. Like, it moves the story along for sure. the most part. Um, he gets lost in the weeds every now and again, but... I mean, again, we read fucking Moon People, and yeah. Right. In terms of setup, obviously the apocalypse thing and you know this is a cycle so how many books are going to be in this cycle we don't know i believe it's a trilogy of course it is why wouldn't it just be a trilogy then instead of the odyssean cycle like yeah okay well you know what fine whatever i don't even care (laughs) but what are the possible resolutions at the end of this for the very large build-up of relationship between him and his ex-wife i almost want to find out i'm kind of curious well i mean you bought yourself the book accidentally i returned it oh did you so but and here's why i'm too afraid to go and find out Uh uh-huh i can just sense it something incredibly distasteful and tragic and post-apocalyptic is gonna happen to his ex-wife oh god yeah i mean that's really all that can happen is that she dies and no no like worse than that oh yeah like, yeah no yeah. like raped and murdered and eaten and not necessarily in that order right i mean if i trusted t jackson king as a writer a little more i could construct scenarios where the journey across the apocalyptic america like lets them rebuild their friendship and like work their shit out or maybe the new wife dies and then oh, they're yeah. stuck together No, she's too perfect. (laughs) She's not going to die. But yeah, like, I I don't know. Like, I wish this book were better because, yeah, the world building of the first chapter was competent enough. I mean, I don't know what year we're supposed to be in, but it can't be too far in the future. If he served in the Vietnam War and the first Gulf War. Yeah, that's fair. It can't be. The idea that all of this has happened up to the point of there being neo-dollars. (laughs) <laughs> like the the currency has been replaced right that doesn't really play in the time frame that we have based on his military service neo mob neo dollars like yeah because that's uh, like man, some a cyber lot of things shit. happened between like 2012 and 2014 like a yeah. lot of stuff happened <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm just gonna go ahead and jump out on a limb here and say that this is supposed to be like 2020 sure which would put our narrator somewhere in his 60s or 70s right which changes all of this really yeah if you consider him being old enough to be a vietnam veteran at all right yeah he's gotta be even in 2012 when he was writing if he was thinking of the character as you know this is some sort of weird other world thing where this all started happening at the beginning of 2012 because of the Mayans Mm -hmm. and now it's been like a year and things are weird or six months or whatever you know Mm -hmm. sure sure okay I'll buy that for a dollar but you're still dealing with someone who's like mid 60s Mm -hmm. not to say that somebody who takes care of themselves and is a reasonably active person can't be an adventure hero 
into their 60s and, and honestly like i think there's room for that you know in in these kind of genres like, oh yeah yeah like totally. older heroes or you know heroes with physical limitations like i think that's interesting sure yeah Geralt is like older right he's not like a young spry thing isn't he like middle-aged oh um, i mean he's I don't really know pseudo immortal because he's of the witch well, yeah i mean metal. aragorn was him. like 80 so. yeah not him then vesemir but yeah i wish that this book were better there's always Cohen the Barbarian. Yeah. Oh, oh, and, and, and one thing that I do want to point out, uh, something that this book makes me realize is how much of an unseen relationship there is between reader and author. Like, how much trust has to go back and forth for a book to actually work. It, uh... No, I, I agree. I, I think there's some validity to that, that like building a connection between the author and the reader is very important. Well, I think we're done. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's a good place to end on. I'm disappointed because this book was better than I expected. But not as good as it should have been. But not as good as it should have been. Yeah. Because I expected this when I, when I picked it to be the usual, you know, bullshit garbage that we read. And it was a little bit elevated from that, but still very disappointing. I do think that this... Honestly, honestly, T. Jackson King could benefit quite a lot by an editor. Yeah. And a therapist. And possibly a therapist, yeah. Yeah. But uh, getting an editor in here to kind of steer him a little bit, I guess that would be a little too much like censorship and authority for his tastes. Mm -hmm. They're not going to tell me how to tell my story. Well, Bubba... Everybody needs a little bit of a push now and again, and maybe trust the people that are experts in it. I agree. All right. Well, um, is, does anybody have anything else to say? No. No, let's be done with be done with Tom's work here. Kane, you're extra mad at this book, Kane. What's like, and, 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 and admittedly, extra mad is kind of your default state. <laughs> but but the rest of us are like kind of softly forgiving of this book in a lot of ways nah. and you seem extra angry about it and i'm curious why that's not is. extra angry that's that's silly Kane. i'm normal amount of angry i think that kane is probably angry because eventually this book is going to come around to the hardline rationalist having to accept the existence of magic Sure. <laughs> Which and, I've seen fantasy novels do pretty yep, well. Yep. I just knew that that's what it was going to be. <laughs> it's not so much foreshadowing as it is uh, spelling you over it out. the head. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, I don't believe in fanciful things. And then midway through the book, he's going to believe in fanciful things. So that's just silly. Right. Hey, gang, correct me if I'm wrong, but also you seem particularly aggravated by his perspectives of being a parent kane was a little more forgiving about that stuff than we were yeah to no, some that's, extent. that's not the worst of it that's not the worst of it i don't know i just i felt like this guy is you know i, I feel like this guy had an idea yeah he had this apocalyptic thing that was going to take place uh -huh. and then he tried to cram the most annoying mundane shit into it oh yeah oh yeah which you know like why i have questions that will never be answered because i'm not going to finish this book like why is the west coast free of the anarchy and destabilization of the east coast because i still have their guns Duh. because people on the west coast live in harmony with nature <sighs> and their right, guns you know that's, that's just it's just dumb that's the feeling i get while i was reading it mm -hmm. i actually felt my iq lowering sure. so maybe that's why it sounds like I'm angrier. No, Kane, that was just my plan going into effect. <laughs> so I'll be picking back oh, up and reading books next yeah. week, guys. Oh, did you engage the failsafe? <laughs> Kane, you just you guys just don't understand the special relationship that exists between nature and hunter and AK forty seven gunning down a defenseless deer. Um I did while we were talking, I flipped through the uh the Amazon sample chapter. Yeah. Which, in retrospect, could have saved us four dollars. <laughs> um, but um, the, now, the book <laughs> now Tom King can get like half a cheeseburger. Yeah, go buy yourself a club sandwich. Hopefully, he'll get like two minutes of of therapy with uh, it. The book does take time to point out that uh, Mary loves to have sex with Tom. Ah, good, good. Well, like it's, he's just really great at it. Yeah. So that's all she really wants to do. Well, that's good. Yeah, um, yeah. Direct quote: Mary loves sex in every way we could imagine. 
She was the only woman I'd ever known who could be hornier than any man alive. Uh, yep. I, they definitely you, did butt stuff. <laughs> so I'm guessing here, and I uh, this is maybe me assuming a bit too much, but we have a guy who had the happy family life, wife, three kids, everything was great. Mm -hmm. She cheated on him and stepped out. Their relationship had sort of lost its passion, what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, this led to acrimonious fighting and divorce, and he's not yet forgiven her. He met up with someone new mm -hmm. and confused the ability to have passionate sex with someone you don't have a mash emotional baggage with love. Sure. All I can say is, is that I, I know why I'm getting angry. Oh yeah. Because it's fucking hot in here. Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Let's that wrap furnace up. So will that, do that. <laughs> yeah. Let's wrap up so that Kane can turn his air conditioner back on. <laughs> so, so should I, should I make this um, last comment or yeah, go ahead. Yeah, That's just fine. do it? God damn it. <laughs> First of all, that didn't happen because this woman's imaginary. He's never met this woman before, I don't think. And secondly, I just like the idea of like, oh yeah, my first marriage didn't work out. Well, fuck you. I'm I'm gonna meet a girl that has hookers and blackjack in her butt, which she allowed <laughs> me to access. Um, I guess we're done. I honestly didn't expect to get this much content out of the guy in Enchantment. There was a lot to talk about. Yeah. If you enjoyed any of this, then don't forget to go to wegiveyoubrainworms.com and go to our Patreon. You can support whatever the fuck it is that we're doing over here. And uh, like and subscribe on YouTube. If you're a YouTube listener, don't forget to click the bell and choke the turtle and all that action. <laughs> uh, if you leave a comment, we will probably engage with it. So yeah, thank you for listening. We're really sorry for what we just put you through. And I'm going to push the button. We're sorry. This has been a production of Brain Worms Presents. Any copyrighted content contained within is used for purposes of review. Brain Worms Podcast is David Combs, Kane Magdalene, Christian Schaefer, and Joseph Wells. The theme music is HodgePodge No. 1 by Brian Davis. If you like what you heard and can support us and learn about our other projects at WeGiveYouBrainWorms.com or by leaving a review on your favorite listening app. I'm sure that Tom is a big man. <laughs>